Hi, in today's video, let's talk about an interesting treatment sometimes used for amblyopia that has a little bit of controversy surrounding it and one I'm not really all that fond of. But before I go into that, let's talk about how you can connect with us. If you're local, call us at 618-288-1489. If you're not local, we can still help please go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. You can fill out a questionnaire if you just want some information, but don't do that. You really need to just schedule a consultation with us if you're ready to take that next step and actually have vision improvement. Now let's go back and talk about what, what is this controversial thing that I'm talking about? Well, in amblyopia, a condition where one eye is not developing the ability to see clearly, then there are multiple ways to treat it. Sometimes people just recommend that you wear glasses or do patching, and a lot of times it'll patch for years and years and years trying to improve eyesight. Well, in our clinic, we do things a lot different, and we believe that Syntonics combined with our vision therapy protocol for our program is super powerful because it is. We help patients to see better all the time. So what is this controversial treatment? Well, let's dig in a little bit. It's called atropine and it's a drop that you can put in your eyes. It is a specific acting agent, which is an anticholinergic. What that means is that it works on blocking a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine from being released. Now, why does that actually matter? Well, it actually stops and causes involuntary muscle movement specific within the eye that allows a person to be able to focus the size of their pupil and change that size depending on if they're in a bright light setting or if they happen to be in the dark. And if someone can't control that any longer, then what occurs is the pupil will begin to be dilated. If you use atropine over the course of many days, in one eye and that eye is dilated and it cannot focus, then it means that that eye is not really able to see clearly. Well, how do you use it then in the case of amblyopia? Well, what the doctor would prescribe is the use of this medication, this atropine or anticholinergic in the eye that sees well. So it gives the chance for the better or the amblyopic eye to see better. So for instance, if I were amblyopic in my right eye, the doctor would say, well, let's put the drop in the better seeing eye, the left eye, let's just keep it dilated to where it cannot focus. So we make the brain try to turn on seeing better with that right eye. Well, let's talk about why I don't necessarily like this one. First of all, it has some things that I'm not fond of, which is just blocking the brain's ability or the eye's ability actually to be able to focus and see clearly. So you're taking the eye that's the better seeing eye and, is, and effectively you're just making it not be able to focus for weeks on end, typically, sometimes months actually, depending on the course of treatment that the doctor prescribes. Now, why is that a problem? Well, it's kind of like the individual who is going through this is forced to not be able to use their better seeing eye all the time for all of their waking hours. And for us, I feel like that's a little bit of maybe a harsh treatment and I feel like there's a better, safer and more effective method of doing things. So why am I also opposed to it for other reasons? Well, because of its properties, that anticholinergic acting that it does, it can also, in some instances, cause um, a bit of a, an allergic reaction or even a toxic reaction. Ooh, toxic reaction. Well, in toxic reactions, it's really quite serious. And believe it or not, in my career of 20 some years, how long? 22? Yeah, 22 years. Hard to believe. In my career, I have actually witnessed toxicity to this a couple of times. Not because I prescribed it for patients, but because someone else prescribed it. And then I started working with that individual and I was like, let's, let's stop that. So what does a toxic reaction look like? Well, it can cause problems with bowels. It can cause tachycardia, which is a heartbeat that's just kind of like an abnormal fast rhythm where you can't slow the heart down. And it can also cause a lot of dryness, like dry mouth, dry skin. Uh, there are many other symptoms that can go along with a toxic reaction. And again, believe it or not, I've actually seen that twice, I think, in my career. So what is the better option? I alluded to it before and I said that, you know, our clinic does things differently. 
and I talked about syntonics and our vision therapy program. So our therapy program is split into two different phases. And what that looks like is the first phase is electrically stimulating the brain to be able to turn on that amblyopic eye. Now, there are a series of lenses. You might notice I've got several on my desk and several of them are important in the process of turning this eye back on and making the brain connect with it to be able to see better. But really, the one lens or the one filter that's the most important is this one right here. Knowing when to use this and how to use it throughout the course of the treatment program is super important. And it takes kind of a specific method of following certain filters in a particular order in order to treat the brain to turn on that eye that might not be, in see, be seen well or that amblyopic eye. Now, after phase one, where our patients are using these various filters, they continue to use them in phase two, but we also add the component of hands-on vision therapy, teaching our patients how to have better eyesight in that eye that's been amblyopic. We might need to also teach that eye how to line up if it's strabismic and turning, you know, in or out or maybe up or down. And we also may need to work on decreasing the lens prescription. So if someone has a strong, thick lens prescription for one eye, like the amblyopic eye, which can be a little bit more typical. So there's some asymmetry and one eye might need a stronger lens to see better. That might be the reason why they developed amblyopia to begin with. And if that's the case, then we might want to work on reducing that asymmetry in the lens prescription between the two eyes. So phase two is really kind of the hands-on component of teaching the person how to be able to see better, to focus at all distances, how to gain binocularity, and ultimately how to have depth perception. That's like the end all beat all to the end of um, the uh, treatment of amblyopia. So, you know, if your doctor has mentioned maybe the possibility of your child needing to use atropine, you might want to just take a pause and think about that and think about some of the things presented here today. Maybe look at your other options that are available to you that might be less invasive and have less potential for long term complications. Also, might be a little bit kinder and gentler to your child who, you know, has been used to seeing with their one better seeing eye most of their life. And rather than putting drops in there and paralyzing that eye to where the muscles can't focus for it to be able to see better, I think we can maybe do it a slightly different way. So with that, I'm going to say for more information, go to our website at visionforlifeworks.com. If you're local, call us at 618-288-1489. If you're ready to just take that next step and maybe we need to be the ones treating you or your child because of amblyopia, then schedule a consultation with us. Pass this video on if you feel like it would be helpful to others. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you.